Welcome back. When Jewish settlers came to the Holy Land in the 19th century, they found barren land and poor people, suffering from disease and poverty. All that changed as the settlers brought agricultural advances, as well as health and education breakthroughs that benefited everyone. In the 19th century, life was hard under Ottoman rule for Arab workers in Palestine. Many had lost their farms to heavy Turkish taxes or Bedouin raiders. There were no schools, no electricity, and little sanitation. The average life expectancy for an Arab male in Palestine was 30. With the arrival of the Jewish settlers, all of that started to change. With hard work, they turned swamps into vineyards, farms, and citrus groves. They introduced electricity to Palestine and improved the sanitation. They also worked to eradicate the mosquitoes that cause malaria and the local Arabs benefited from their work. Over a 20-year period, the infant mortality rate for Arab children was cut in half, and the life expectancy for Arab men increased by 12 years. The Jewish landowners hired many of them to help work the land and paid them better than their Arab employers. First of all, following the purchase of land, the Arab population had income. With the help of this money, they could improve their living, and the Arab society could raise their standard of living. So because of Jewish purchase of lands, the economic and social conditions of the Arab society were better. Arabs from neighboring countries flocked to Palestine to take advantage of the higher standard of living. From 1922 to 1947, the total Arab population in Palestine more than doubled. In the city of Haifa, the number of Arabs increased by 290%. In Jerusalem, 131%. And in Jaffa, 158%. In 1939, Jewish scholar Martin Buber described the cooperation between Arabs and Jews in a letter to Mahatma Gandhi. The Jewish farmers have begun to teach their brothers, the Arab farmers, to cultivate the land more intensively. Together with them, we want to cultivate the land, to serve it, as the Hebrew has it. The more fertile this soil becomes, the more space there will be for us and for them. We have no desire to dispossess them. We want to live with them. By the time Israel declared independence in 1948, the Jewish people had already built a strong network of communal farms that stretched from the Galilee to the Negev. They'd also built schools, hospitals, roads, and cities. In other words, they were already functioning as an independent state. When Ben-Gurion declared the foundation of the State of Israel in 1948, he already had a base, a territorial foundation of lands and settlements. A large number of settlements spread throughout Israel. Settlements built on lands purchased by the Jewish people. Despite the valid historical and legal claims of the Jewish people to their land, Israel's borders are still being negotiated after nearly seven decades of statehood. Even though there is no doubt, not historic, not moral, not archaeological doubt about the connection of Israel to the land and the land to Israel, Israelis are willing to compromise just in order to save lives, just in order to achieve peace. We will wait until we have a partner on the Palestinian side which is trustworthy, which does not believe in the destruction of Israel and the Jewish people as a way to build their own national narrative and willing to live with us in peace and cooperation.